I'm early. Hello, hello. I am super early. Super, super, super early. Because I'm not at home. That would be why. Hello, hello. <laughs> come in, come he in. At a quick <laughs> business <laughs> meeting. <laughs> well, hi, 47 Malone. How are you? Hello, hi, come Solomon and Jennifer H. How are you all doing? <laughs> Good evening. We talking nerdy stuff, so that's why I got my glasses on. We talking yeah, nerdy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks again, Todd, and we'll See you later. All right. Thank you, Kim. I'm loving it. It's working good for me. Hey, Sheila Cushion Barry. Do you like balls tomorrow? No. <laughs> okay. Oh, whoops. Should I? Well, no, I'm gonna leave that on. What's well, so up? How you gonna say no? I don't know. How is everyone this evening? I don't know I'll find something. Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> um, actually. Right. See you guys. Thank you, man. Okay. Bye. Um, I was told to tell you hello. Hey, y'all. Jaleel heard you. Um, we are not far from home, but away from home. There's a couple of errands that we had to run tonight. One of which uh, is I, and sorry for the camera jumping. I need to get ink for my printer, which I may not do tonight because I think the place closes at eight. And the other thing, I'm just not gonna worry about. So it was. And somebody ain't put down their seat though. But we um, took a ride to his parents' house, which is about an hour away. Oh, I can't reach closer. And on the way back, we got into a bit of a, not really a discussion, but I mentioned, because he asked what we were gonna do for the show tonight. And <clears throat> investment in business was, sounded like a good idea anyway. So that's what I decided we would talk about tonight because this one right here is the brains behind a lot of the finances with my business. And he makes sure that I don't, or he tries to make sure I don't overspend and I try to listen and make sure that I'm making sound financial decisions. And a lot of that is because of, um, he's had his own business for 26 years now. 1995. 95. I don't know how many years because that's math. <laughs> Y'all know how wow. I am. 24, I know Darling. we're nerdy tonight. September. Lorraine says hi. Hey, hey Lorraine. Lorraine. <laughs> Barbara Nan, so crafty. Jaleel's in here. Nancy Faust, Joni Thurman, Carolyn York. Hello, Carolyn York. How are you? Mary Stovall, Kathy Kaiser. Oh, yeah, so y'all can hear me. Uh, three generation printing. Diana Henderson, Patty O, Everett M. Sesson, Kim Solomon, Robin Bryant. Hello to you all, Jennifer H. Ooh, why did I just go blurry? No, let's not do that. Um, and of course, 47 Malone, Gloria Colvin, Daryl Lil. <laughs> Good evening to everyone. Yeah, we're um out running errands and because I've been having a few migraines the last couple of nights, a couple of days, actually three days. Uh, well, yesterday I got a break, but today the headache came back, so that's why I got my glasses on tonight. Carolyn, you're okay, cool. Well, I'm glad you are able to watch tonight. And Sharon Watts, hey, 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 how are you? <laughs> so, you guys, um, hi, Deborah Lewis, how are you? Hey, Shamina. I miss you guys. It's been a month. Uh oh, well, I'm glad you're back. And Miss Ethel Smith. <laughs> That's a, a big question I wanted to throw out there real quick before we got started. Hey, Debbie Kid. Now, see, Debbie Kid, you have a um, flourishing business, embroidery business. Thank you, 
You too. Shoot, you talking about me feel better. You, I missed you today. Um, but Debbie Kid, like for instance, she has a flourishing business. So for her, I'm sure investing in her business was. I don't want to say a stretch because each person has their own um, had their own method and what not to do. Joni says it was very expensive. Just purchasing the machine alone was pricey. And hello, Sharon Davenport, deep North Texas, <laughs> um, Northeast Texas, rather. I'm sorry, I saw that. Um, and of course, like with embroidery, um, and even like Miss Lorraine can attest to that the cost of our embroidery equipment is a fool okay if if you're trying to go larger than single needle so for instance um in in your suggestion if a person was to invest and purchase the multi-needle like if i told you i was ready to go 10 needle what would you tell me i needed to do to invest in myself i said you needed to save up whatever 10 percent of that that machine is worth so that you can see your progress and see if your business can actually afford to carry that kind of expense if you're not making at least 10 percent of what you're trying to improve it's going to be very, very tough once you do get your business up and running to continue to make sure that you can, whether it be make payments or whatever, because unfortunately life happens. And oh God, don't we know? Yes, things change very, very quickly. Jobs change, loss of jobs, it's just too much. So if you're not able to save a little portion of that, it'll be very, very tough once you actually go into business to be able to keep your business running at a smooth pace because machines break. I've had three machines of mine break this year and I had to buy a new machine this year, you know, and it's just one of those things that you deal with, but it's it's kind of depressing because it eats into your wallet. Your your equipment <clears throat> can be pricey as well because he, he does uh, floor work and his equipment is pretty big and can be pricey too. Joni Thurman says I find um, embroidery for her machine. Sandra, hey Terry, Terry Ponce. Uh, Sandra says I've gone slowly and paid cash for all but my surgery. It's almost paid for. Jalil is clapping. She's in agreement. <laughs> um, I have everything that's just sitting waiting on me. <laughs> yeah, it is, but the good thing is you were able to get everything and that's that that um but i'm proud of the fact that you are and you were able to do that and that was phenomenal um and it also gives me something to to strive to get to that place kim solomon says mine was gradual started to be a distraction and i've purchased with cash only yeah which was gonna be my next uh question to you josephine king says great advice good information and by kingsbury crafts and carol coleman says good evening hey carol coleman how are you <laughs> so um now one of the things when i first started out i was interested in because i saw equipment that i wanted didn't have the cash so that being the case when i asked for credit what would be your your thoughts on using credit to get equipment. I mean, if you have the credit, it's fine. But as I explained to you, when you first set your sights on a certain machine, I said you need to set a goal. And even having the credit, it is a good thing because of course your payments will be, you know, minor compared to somebody who doesn't really have it. But the problem once again is how much income are you generating? And when you're trying to start a business, like these other people have done paid cash for stuff they're they're debt free they are free and clear if something goes wrong they mess up somebody's outfit i think everybody in this business any business knows there's going to be screw-ups right yeah. my wife comes home with tears in her eyes because she messes up it hurts me because i understand that pain i felt what it feels like to have a job go bad whereas i've had to spend thousands of dollars redoing something because my guy screwed up you know 
it's one of those things where it's even with credit, things can happen and they happen so fast, whether it be a business, loss of a loved one that's important or a breadwinner, you know, those two incomes, everything plays a part. So why trash your credit on something that can be gotten without having to go and that far into debt unless you could pay it off very very quickly um because there's no guarantees in business and that's that's a sad fact uh i've been doing it 24 well technically i've been doing it 35 years but i've had my own accounts for 25 years and here recently in the last i dare say 10 years has been the first time in a long time i've actually been able to have a contract with one particular company everybody else changes so the influx of changes and some of those businesses that i've done guess what their customers change businesses who's the first person they cut out they cut out my yeah. services because they've lost money Likewise so for us, yes you know it's the exact same thing for any other business so they're not going to if if something happens to their income they're going to cut where they splurge so you know what we offer is in a lot of instances a luxury mm -hmm. more so than a necessity so you you yeah they wouldn't want to continue to um, pay for extra things with us so if you're absolutely banking on that income then it, it, that's understandable but if you're banking on it because of a debt for a piece of equipment that you thought was going to be the answer to all of your financial prayers then that could be a problem um, if you don't have something else to fall back on which was what made it so awesome for me um, you know he is the breadwinner in the house and has been for many years so when it was time for me to start um, and start investing in my little uh, business it was I took it slowly so from from my standpoint um, with his guidance, of course. Um, I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm getting ready to look at video on the blankets and you try and pay with cash. Yes, a lot of folks do. Johnny says, I had no idea how much the cost would be until I really got into uh, the other. Thank God for you, Eve, with your knowledge about how we could do this. You're welcome. And hey, Teresa Spencer. And the thing was, and, and that's what made me think about it because I knew one of my plans today was to go invest in um, another, it was just ink, something simple for my business. But the problem to me was my ink ain't cheap. Now I'm not talking about sublimation. I'm talking about just regular ink to go in the printer to print invoices and stuff. We talked about it last week for those that were in the live with us last week with Justin and how he was saying the printer is made to run out of a specific ink. Like it won't just print black. It'll add a little bit of other ink so it'll run out faster. Well, I talked about how expensive that stupid ink was last week and I still haven't bought it. So I was gonna go today and purchase the ink. Hey, little Miss Boti. And when uh, I sat there and thought about it, I'm like, God dang it, that's gonna be $40 plus tax that I'm gonna have to kick out. Um, and then I'm going to be investing in um, some bling tonight, actually, and in the morning for some more supplies because I have a bling party coming up. Um, but fortunately, like with the bling party, it pays for itself in most instances. Uh, but because with me purchasing stones and I purchase extra, well, the bling party doesn't cover that. You know, I mean, it does in a way, but in a way it doesn't. So I'm I'm reinvesting in myself. So uh, in hopes that I use those stones to make money. But at any rate, so when we got to talking about it um, and I thought about it, I'm like, well, I know the struggle of trying to start a business and trying to start a business very limited because I know for me personally, if I didn't have his income, I'm on extremely limited income because I get a monthly stipend. So if something were to happen and I lost his income, I wouldn't have any income to really invest 
in if it were solely based on that check so to have the blessing of being able to um the the blessing of being able to have his income but a little bit of income from my own business that's what you know you have to, a person just starting out will have to build up to shamina says good to hear from hubby tonight i'm definitely listening and taking notes from him i love the way he supports you my husband does it says the exact same thing and it's and, and supports me in the exact same way and they are I mean not everyone has that luxury but I do appreciate even though sometimes it hurts <laughs> sometimes it hurts y'all I'll be like but I want to spend on this you know but at the end of the day I have to remember what he is advising because as there have been times where I didn't and we had issues because I throw off the family budget investing in something I thought was important for my business without talking to him about it. And we don't have, it, it, it throws everything off. So we have to be on the same wavelength. And that's easier said than done because I'm one of those, unfortunately, impulse type buyers. So, you know, if I come across something that's a really good deal and I don't think I'm going to be able to come across that deal again unfortunately I have very little self control so I have to you know that little his little voice is always in the back like <laughs> you know better you know what you don't need to do and what you need to do so it, it's difficult but I wanted to uh, dialogue with you guys and see what your investment strategy has been like what has worked for you what hasn't worked and if you could go back and give your just starting out self one sentence of advice what would that be so i would love to hear your um take on that if you could go back to your original self just starting out and you have one sentence to tell yourself what would that be shamina um, we appreciate your input. Joni says, "You have you considered purchasing another printer and using the HP Ink program? I love it. I have not. Um, the only reason at this point is because that printer that I am using for invoices was an investment as well uh, for my business. And it wasn't an investment I personally made. So I didn't want to change it out and then you know, and then it'd be an issue with the original investor for that printer. So that's why I haven't done it. Um, Jennifer says, ink is so expensive. I bought some yesterday at Best Buy, $73. At Office Depot, my brand HP was 68. I bought the off-brand Connell, still 74. And ink can be very pricey. Lorraine, that's why definitely the support and why I encourage support in the group because no not everyone has may have this support but because I know how well it has worked for him and I know how well he has worked for me I have no issue sharing that knowledge with you guys so that even if you didn't have that type of support you could have the information behind it as if the support was there I mean, support comes in a lot of different ways, but um, just knowing that knowledge that he has and sharing it with you guys, I thought was going to be valuable, and I, I appreciate him because he normally don't go on camera with me. <laughs> Jennifer says, my smaller printer is on the Instant Ink program, but they don't offer it for the wide format one. Okay, cool. Yeah, of course, Lorraine. Always, you know that. It, it's got to be something real serious going on for me to not pick up your phone call. <laughs> you know that. Joni says, Jennifer, I just purchased an HP printer from Best Buy Wild Format and they sold me the ink program. I'll have to find out what this ink program is, y'all, because that's that sound like that's the bee's knees. Hey, Will, how are you? Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Little Miss Boutique says, I just spent 100 for your ink, but it'll last you a while. Ooh, 100 is a fool. I think your hubby and mine are related. So crafty says, they might be. <laughs> they might be. 
they were little i wouldn't have spent so much for products on credit banking on sales to cover the cost mm -hmm. clients don't like to pay the prices you set mm -hmm. i'm gonna stop lowering my prices mm -hmm. trying to tell you i had to say that myself oh shut up will yeah, that's, that's what's insane. up ink program is a monthly subscription and you get ink delivered so often I need to see if they got that for me. You're welcome, my love. Diana says, I had a small craft shop once. It was starting to take off and starting to advertise. Then I got robbed twice in two weeks. Oh, my God. And it went out of business real quick. It was devastating. Oh, my gosh. Diana, that is a trip. But that also brings to reason, just like you said, you never know what could happen anything could happen and it doesn't even have to be so much your business that um you know causes a problem it's somebody else causing you a problem you know just like i don't know have y'all been watching the news lately um oh sharon honey this is my car <laughs> she told me he driving a standard vehicle watch out now no boo boo this is my stick <laughs> this <is> my stick <laughs> I got it for her. He bought it for me. He knew I loved driver straight drive. I'm sorry. I just I shouldn't have said that. My bad. Um, but at any rate, I don't know if y'all been watching the news, but like here in Charlotte, there was um one house that blew up. But there was a KFC in North Carolina. I forget where it was. The whole KFC just blew slap up. I don't know if y'all saw that on the news. Crazy. I mean, it was just like boom, and the whole thing was gone so not saying maybe a careless worker left the gas on or maybe you know a neighbor digging broke the gas line or who knows you know what i'm saying but it very well could not have been something that caused an issue on the part of the business owner and now this business owner has no building no supplies, no equipment, no nothing anymore. All of it. And there was another lady in one of the embroidery groups and her uh, electrical something happened and it caused a fire, burnt the whole place to smell range, y'all. So it doesn't take much to derail. Of course, yes, that's what insurance is for. But when you're a small business starting out, sometimes folks tend to not get insurance. So these are all of the business things that you would want to invest in so definitely me going back talking to my just starting out self those small expenditures would be something i would definitely make sure were first and foremost um let me go back ink was economical but lasted forever she looks in with her laser yeah laser oh stupid stream that's killing me Jennifer says it may be being shipped straight from Best Buy because on the HP website they say it is an offer for Wi-Fi. Okay, that's so I'm gonna have to check and see if they have one. Arthur Lewis says, hey, even everyone watching on my phone, not at home. I still don't have power after Hurricane Barry. Oh no. I'm sorry. Barry is a fool. I knew two people in the area. So please be careful and hopefully your power will come back on soon. And I'm so sorry to hear that the power went out. It's, it's, that was tragic seeing all that water. And there again, Barry. Who who forced all Barry coming? You know, our equipment can't get wet. Yep. Our equipment Most cannot equipment get wet. cannot get wet. Right. So again, when you're going to invest, you have to take into account the unaccount unaccountable, the things that you don't know are going to happen so you have to be careful debbie kid my love she says my business was never considered in the household but now that my husband passed before his full retirement now i have to use my business to supplement the household which is a big change and i'm sure it is because now your business has to perform to a certain degree uh, to make sure that the bills are paid so that can also change the mindset and the where's Jalil at? Is she in here? It could change the goals <laughs> of the business. 
So my uh, business strategist partner is Ms. Jalil. She's in here frequently and she's been working with me to get my business. I got to the finance part yet, <laughs> but it's coming. It is coming. So, um, but yes, you changes are imminent, unfortunately, because there's always something going on. Stacy says, I recently started my business. I bought the PE 800 embroidery machine but I haven't made any money as of yet. Should I invest in any more machinery that could give me a boost? So what do you think on that? Not at all. That That is the quickest way that a lot of new businesses go out of business. You can use, no matter what your business is, you can use advice now from YouTubers and other people in your field. You guys have the uh, not channels, but what do they call it? Your groups, your your little groups that you have on Facebook or yes, something. on Facebook to be able to help uh, either possibly generate business because I think there was some big thing about the oven mittens that they had oh, to use what you have yeah. because yeah. if it's paid for, that means you don't have to worry about the repo man coming to get it. You don't have to worry about it messing up your credit. It's paid for. And if you're not making money off of it yet use what you have first you know start getting that little bit of income don't invest i wouldn't say invest heavily in something now unless you have the disposable income there if you have it then by all means you know but keep in mind again anything can happen to change that so if you're not making money with the first piece of equipment then what's going to happen with the second piece of equipment who says that the second piece of equipment is a guarantee that you're going to make the money that you need to make so if you're able to try and swing it as best as you possibly can with what you have then that may be the better option it may be um if you're looking at something like a heat press or um, a cutting machine, you know, for instance, some people may say, well, I'm doing embroidery. I do a lot of applique. I want to invest in a Cricut so that it can cut the applique stuff for me. That makes sense. I totally get that. However, if what is it really killing you to cut it by hand for the time being? What is it really killing? Is it that bad that you have to have a cutting machine in order to do your business and make it flourish? Sometimes we want the easy way out um, and deal with the financial repercussions later. And that may not be the better option. That may not be the better option. Um, Debbie Kidd says, I was lucky to be able to have the business to support that with hardship and that is a good thing i'm very happy for that especially for you we've talked about it before um gloria says any advice on insurance on small businesses we uh my yours, business is a yeah. lot different from yeah, you guys so different. i'm not sure how but i would definitely talk to someone mm -hmm. to find out because it is a necessary evil mm -hmm. um now the good thing is with you guys you don't have to really worry about clientele whereas that is my insurance my insurance covers my people both my workers and my uh whatever store that i'm in if i break something or what have you mm -hmm. or god forbid one of my machines blows up in a store because we've had people with machines catch on fire you know or set something on fire in the store but you would definitely have to talk with your insurance agent and uh, find out what would be the best for you, uh, whether it be theft, uh, flood, fire, because there's certain things homeowners insurance does not cover. Right. And it right. and you need to find out if it if it will cover it. Uh, so to protect yourself in case of, um, fortunately, those worst case scenarios. Yeah, insurance. Um, you'd be surprised at how affordable small business insurance actually is um we were uh pleasantly surprised but that was because we knew his business was more of a higher risk as far as customers in the store and whatnot are concerned but for us our risk is a whole lot less so your main concern would be covering your equipment um 
so that if anything happens to your equipment, uh, flood or fire or what have you, um, supplies and stuff like that, generally folks don't end up having to file lawsuits against us for embroidery um, or mm -hmm. bling, actually, or vinyl for that matter. Um, if someone is also doing sewing, you know, making baby stuff, then that may be, you know, an issue because I make my own bibs and I make my own blankets. Uh, well, I used to um, cut back on the blankets, but the bibs and stuff. So that could be uh, an issue. So those are things that I would need to look at. Um, Debbie Kidd says she loves the HP Instant Ink program. <laughs> Y'all making me drool. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> Will says, that's always on my mind that my business is in a shared office space and never know if one of them do something stupid. Leave a cigarette burning. Set off the sprinklers, yep. the whole nine. Um, Jalil, invest the time to speak with a business strategist or mentor. You can avoid a lot of missteps if you speak with someone with experience and wisdom. That's regardless of what stage you are in your business. So uh sage advice from her she's the business strategist and also if you're going on the custom craft cruise she is going to be the business uh class instructor so i'm glad she's in here to weigh in on this information because investing in your business is very important and you want to make sure that you make um you know the best decisions when it comes to that because that that's a huge it's a it's a big deal it's a big deal. There's a lot of folks I know that want to go into business, but all they have is $50 to their name, but they have a dream. And that's okay, but you have to make sure that you take appropriate steps first. Because it takes money to make money, no matter what business. It is going to take money. And I'm going to let Jalil handle it from here because she's the professional professional. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and go in the shop. So, um, here, you gonna bring me my keys? Oh, yeah. I, I was gonna leave the car out. Oh, that's fine. Okay. You take the keys. So, at any rate, will I please do a video on how you embroidered on the rain boots? Yes, that's coming. That is definitely coming. Um, I just have not um, done it yet and unfortunately uh oh unfortunately one of the downsides uh, for me in my business okay so this is something else I personally have to keep in mind and I know several other folks do is my ailments you know because I have quite a few medical conditions unfortunately so there are times where I cannot work. So if I can't work, then how am I gonna make money? You know, so if I'm investing in my business, it's gonna get dark real quick, y'all. Cause I didn't, um, whoops, sorry. I didn't have the lights on in here. But if, if I'm investing, say for instance, I wanted to buy, because I do, I would love to have a wide format printer so that I can print um, the world. Hope that wasn't a spider web. I hate spider webs. Um, so that I can print, you know, bigger things. Well, if I do a wide format printer for $7,000, for instance, you know, what sense does that make if I'm not able to work? full time with my business and then now I've spent money and can't pay that money back that doesn't make right good sense now does it so you have to pay attention with your investments and make sure that you're investing soundly that's the word I needed to find Woo! I'm in the studio y'all we back home alright so let me go back to the comments Justin hey Justin how are you um, Ethel Smith also on the chipboard. Ooh, chipboard. That is a um that's going to be a box for a toy, a limited edition toy that a local artist asked me to make. He wanted the box to be special. Um and and be something really different and something that 
uh, you could feel. So that's why he asked me to order the chipboard. But yes, we can definitely do a video on the chipboard because I have more boxes to, to embroider. Um, Jalil says, from your machine to any systems that you may have, use it to its full potential before you purchase another one. Full potential. So you guys, if you have any business strategist questions, although I'm sorry, Jalil, now that I think about it, I shouldn't say that because I don't want to just throw you. What we can do is, if you have any quick questions, you can drop them in the chat. If she's in here, she'll answer them. If she's not in here, then I'll post the answer in the hoop group whenever she fills up to it. Sheila Cushionberry says, don't let hoop envy drive you into debt. There are many things that can be done within 5x7 that will sell. Just have to find your niche. And I definitely agree with that. I, I preach that from the mountaintops um, and have for quite a while because a lot of times people, and I guess it's, it's a... Um, it's a, I don't want to say a pet peeve, but basically it's a pet peeve. I, I, seen, I can't make any money with this 4x4. Four four. I'm like, no, you can make money with the 4x4. Four four. I did for three years before, two years actually, before being able to acquire a larger machine. And I did pretty darn good, you know, just starting out with that little 4x4. Four four. You just have to find what works for your area and... The thing is, any of it can, how can I put this? So like for my goal, I don't even, I actually, I didn't have a goal when I first bought it. I bought it because I was like, oh, what's an embroidery machine? I don't even know. We're going to try and find out. So it took me a year to learn how to use it because I, I just set it off to the side. And I don't know, several of you may have heard my story before. But when I went to try to learn how to use the machine, there wasn't very much guidance out there. So that's what started me on the path of if I learn something, I'm going to teach others. I want other people to know how to use it too. So that's where that whole part of this channel came from. But the baby's booty actually came from once I learned how to use the embroidery machine. And I'm like, well, this is kind of small. What can I embroider that's small? baby stuff you know it was just it was logical you know i knew i needed to use that hoop to its fullest potential four by four so what better thing to embroider on people love embroidered stuff for their babies use it to do baby stuff and that's where the baby's booty came from in me doing baby gifts right so i constantly say in the videos you can make it work with the 4x4 hoop. There are a lot of in-the-hoop things you can do with 4x4 that you can sell. And you can uh, make them in the colors. Like, for instance, if you have kids or grandkids, make them in the colors of the school team. Kids love that. Sell those. Um, doing monograms on bathrobes or doing monograms on uh, cuffs or... Uh, gosh, I mean, there's just a ton of stuff that you actually really can make money off of with that 4x4 machine, although that's a topic for a different discussion. But in a way, it goes with this one because it shows you you can invest in a smaller amount. You don't have to go for the $12,000 embroidery machine and be making payments when you can pay cash for the smaller machine and use that to make the money to reach for those bigger goals you know so definitely check that out hey patrick quinlan how are you stacy says thank you i was thinking about purchasing the cricket machine but i will take your advice and hold on it thankfully my embroidery machine is fully paid for and the good thing about that though stacy although it may seem like oh man i really wanted to go ahead and buy that cricket it teaches you to be content not that you're not content i don't i don't want to make it insinuate that you're not content but it makes it forces you to be patient forces you to be content and it teaches you to be creative and makes you use utilize what you have to the fullest as jalil pointed out and the cool thing is when the time comes for you to, you've made some money and you are able to go ahead and invest in that piece of equipment, nine times out of 10, a better version will be out. So you'll get the latest and greatest of whatever it is that's out. 
um, some more kinks may have been worked out or you may find out that may not be the brand you want to go with because you're saying Cricut. There's also a brother scan and cut and there's also the silhouette cutting machine. So you have three different options out there floating around online. Which one is the better decision? Which one is the better machine to get? So this gives you more time to do more research to see which is the best way to go. All right. Now that also brings me to another topic on investing in your business and i'm gonna scroll up a little bit before i um answer that point gloria says thanks you'll talk to your agent please do insurance is very important shonda says i love the change of scenery true dedication for your subscribers i appreciate you girl <laughs> when he was like i gotta go meet my boss and i was like oh man i want to go with you but if if you take me home, it'll take me out the it'll take you out the way, and maybe we can get back on time. And then I was like, oh man, you know what? I'm just gonna have to go live on my phone. I said because I can't be late. I'm not gonna be late. <laughs> I'm not gonna be late. So yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. But then I I thought it would be cool because he's been in the room with me on a couple of lives before. Um, and I've discussed talking with him and bringing up things that he's mentioned, but I really wanted you guys to hear from the man folk perspective of a business owner, a successful business owner, because he's raised a whole live family, a wife and six kids, actually an ex-wife, a wife and six kids off of his business. And, and he's done very well for himself and, uh, you know, I can't complain, and I'm sure he shouldn't either. But at any rate, um, I want you guys to hear from him, you know, because he is very wise when it comes to business investments and investing financially and to let y'all hear what he's been trying to tell me for a long time. But at any rate, um, I'm both professional professional. <laughs> yes, for show. Um mommy hold me hi welcome haven't seen you here before welcome to our chat she's long tips truly trying to see everyone grow from children and still if you have any business information where you've invested in your business as you said you're a family-based company out of arizona so how does that transcribe to how you invested in your company to the point to where it's successful Sheila says, that's why I've been scared to take the next step to selling my embroidery because my health changes from day to day. Sheila, so that's where, and I'm going to try really hard not to forget the point that I was going to bring out, but that's where my thing is. I also notify my customers of my limitations, and that's why I set out my deadlines the way that I do because I know between my health and my duties as a wife and mother and other customers who may come in with last second oh my god this is a dire emergency i'm gonna die if i don't get this done you know all of this plays a part in running my business successfully and so i have to take into account what all is going to be expected of me and then I have to set my own realistic expectations because I know for a fact I had this discussion with a, a fellow business person in her shop. A lady came in and requested some work done and the lady wanted it within two days. Technically, it was technically two days. And when the lady came in and she didn't get it within those two days, not due to a fault of the business owner that I'm associated with um she was almost done it was like one or two pieces that weren't done and there was a reason the the customer had sent a file incorrectly within that two day like a day after a day into the two days and she was in there pitching a fit i mean and just it was she was being belligerent about wanting all of her money back and it ended up being pretty bad but even still at the very end of it i i stayed off to the side initially but at the very end, I said, look, I said, look, just first of all, let's walk away from this. I need you to come over here so that she can catch her breath over there. 
but you come over here and let, let's dialogue about what's going on because you want to be heard. Let me hear what you have to say. And so she goes into the spiel where this was supposed to be done, blah, blah, blah. I said, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I do the exact same business. And what you're asking for would have taken me a week and a half. End of discussion. No questions asked. So for you to get it in two days, you're doing pretty darn good. You know, that was just the first part of that discussion. And it went way deeper than that. But you have to set realistic expectations. And part of those expectations revolve around your investment. All right. So if you're investing huge amounts into your business and buying super expensive pieces of equipment, you know, then sickness needs to be taken into account. You know, you may not want to be under the pressure of making a $250 machine payment a month for that embroidery machine that you want. Okay. So if you're going to be sick and you can't earn enough money to cover that then you really want to think on that pretty hard julian says hi from colombia hello how are you unless you're talking about colombia and hello how are you even still <laughs> that's a good ways away jane kirk hello leah hello how are you Evernim? hello how are you uh is the cricket a good investment gloria says it depends, Gloria. What are you going to be using the Cricut for? Okay, so primarily if your business is majority embroidery and embroidery only, then Cricut is more of a luxury because the Cricut, we almost rarely use it in, in embroidery. When you do use the Cricut in embroidery, it's usually used for um, cutting out... Um, the pieces of either applique or in the hoop project cutting out the pieces ahead of time to keep you from having to cut it out by hand all right so that's a luxury that's not a necessity unless you have you know hand issues where you can't you know function to cut so being that you asked that question that's also going to loop me back around to the other point to investing in your business that you may want to be open-minded about and that's used equipment okay so yes there's a larger risk much larger risk okay now investing in used equipment can be a successful strategy let me explain so for me my very first piece of equipment as i mentioned before i bought it at a black friday sale didn't know nothing anything the first thing about embroidery so once I got into it and I learned it and the business was enough to where I'm like, you know what? I need two machines going at one time because these people keep coming at me with these multiple shirt orders. It was mainly over the shirts and it was the logo on the chest and they were small enough where they were within the four by four parameter. So I talked to my husband about it and I was like, I'm really interested in investing in another machine and what i decided to do before talking to him was to look to see if i could find any used okay so i did that first and i did that for a reason because i know him <laughs> and if i had have went to him and said i need another 350 dollar embroidery machine 350 360 he would have been you know not too happy about that at all and i know he would have said no even with me making money I still wasn't quite making enough to buy thread, stabilizer, um, and uh, thread, stabilizer, buying materials because I was underpricing myself um, and making sure that the customer had their shirts and stuff and making enough off of each job to pay for that machine. So by me going online, however, onto Craigslist and offer up the app offer up and trying to find a used machine i found one for 225 dollars brand spanking new in the box open box rather and i let him know i said well this is i'm thinking about getting another machine but here's an option i'm not paying 370 i'm paying 225 what do you think and he was way more open to me getting that deal than for me trying to pay brand spanking new out of the walmart yes there's a risk the machine could have been damaged some kind of way there could have been parts missing from it 
um, those are where you want to do your due diligence and, you know, ask to see it work if you can. In that instance, I couldn't, so I was still taking a big risk. Um, but I felt confident enough in the fact that it was still in the box and they just didn't have time for it anymore that the machine worked. So make sure you're reading the description. Make sure you're asking the right questions. Have you ever embroidered in it on it? Can you send me a picture of how many stitches are on the machine? Um, have you ever had it service? How long have you had it? I mean, that's a lot of questions. And there are a lot of folks who get out there and say, I'm going to do embroidery. And they buy the machine and don't take the time to do the research. Don't take the time to learn. Get frustrated and just let it sit. Um, or there could be someone whose family member did embroidery and they passed away. So there's ways to invest that may not be as expensive. So, uh, Gloria, when you were asking, um, is the Cricut a good investment, you might can find one used. You might can find one used. Uh, because I have two. One of them is the Cricut 1 and one of them is the Cricut Air 2. Okay, so the Cricut 1 is the first Cricut machine I've ever had and most people don't want it because it's not the Cricut Air so they'll sell that one relatively cheap and get rid of it and you can snatch up a Cricut, Cricut really easily with that and it cuts just like my Cricut Air 2 does. I cut rhinestone flock with that one. I cut vinyl with that one. I cut fabric with that one. So just because it's an older model or just because it doesn't have the place to put the pin, all it does is let you cut with the blade. That doesn't mean it's not a good investment. So those people who want the latest greatest are the ones who pass down this other stuff. And so in that instance, yes, it could be an excellent investment, especially if you can get it at a really good deal. Okay, so um, if you're able to do that and you can afford it on a lesser or more affordable um, standard, you know, by buying it used, then that could be an option to get that other piece of equipment that you want without breaking the bank. Kim Smith um, says, Stacy, I sold and I bought the P770 on a whim, found Eve on YouTube, started making bills, burp cloths, and blankets, moved into NFL pillowcases with names embroidered. That's my girl. Trying to tell you, there are ways that you can make money off of these machines, the smaller home-based machines. You just have to take the time to do the due diligence to look for your niche, okay? Uh, Kim Smith, I started making so much money just by word of mouth. Now I make wedding shower gifts and embroidered toilet paper just took off. I'm trying to tell you, those niches are there. Just ask, ask in the groups, ask on Facebook. You know, check and see what other people are doing. You'd be surprised at what opportunities are out there. Um, Kim Smith says, em oh, embroidered toilet paper, yes. Davida, hello, how are you? Welcome. Will says, I want a multi-needle machine, but I've been saving. I will get it when I have the money. Definitely, definitely, because the multi-needle machine is the dream machine to have. It really is. Um, but it's a chunk. It is a chunk. It's a huge investment. Well worth it, but it's a huge investment. And you'd be surprised what people don't realize is once you invest in that bigger machine you start taking on the jobs that that machine can handle and you will end up with for instance just like i said with those shirts and doing the front chest logo with the four by four machine and i had the one machine and i'm getting like 50 shirts to do well eventually i'm like okay well i need another machine so that I could have two machines stitching at the same time and actually I ended up getting three because the same week I found the one machine for 220 I found another one for 200 and he allowed me to invest in both so I had three machines going at one time and I have some videos on Instagram and many times where I had all of those machines going at one time but once I got this machine and I ended up with orders like for instance a 200 piece hat order i still only have one machine that could handle that hat order so when you just because you invest in a multi-needle machine it doesn't mean it's going to be the answer to all your prayers you're probably still going to be working like a dog because more people they'll put more demand on you so when you invest 
make sure you invest wisely on that larger machine but you also want to make sure that when you invest in that larger machine that you invest in yourself as far as giving yourself more time to accomplish those larger specialty orders because a larger machine doesn't mean it's going to be finished faster because it's the, that's the other thing a small 4x4 design can be done in 10 minutes on that machine you get one of those darn 7x10 designs and it's taking 60 minutes to stitch out that eats into your time and your profits I'm just tripping um Diana says, I just bought my sublimation printer and heat press and Cricut, but was able to pay cash because of selling a motorcycle. And that may be an option to invest in yourself as well. I appreciate you pointing that out, Diana, because if you already have something that's worth uh, a chunk that could help you swap out, like maybe you used to do um, some other craft that would get to being able to afford that next piece of equipment hello maria how are you davida says is your class lineup yet it is but it's not there's going to be some changes with that class and i'll be making an announcement on that soon um leah says check sewing machine companies this could as well save you money and check to see brother maybe cricket who does those machines see you that would be correct brian Byron F. Welcome. Thank you. I am glad you made it to catch the chat. Leah says, I have as well seen a few new crickets on the Facebook market. Even the pieces have shown up. So, yes, definitely. Hey, Sylvia, how are you? And Leela, hey, how are you? I'm glad you got a good nappy and girlfriend. I'm about to be right there with Jane. Line. So, again, one of the questions that I had earlier was if you could give your just starting out self one sentence to to make a difference what would that one sentence be byron um i am on my cell phone so there probably will be some buffering um unfortunately and i don't even know if i'm on wi-fi i'm on wi-fi yeah i'm on wi-fi so it shouldn't be buffering too bad but and then with me moving the cell phone like i am not holding it completely still that doesn't help either that doesn't help either um i'll see if i can't find my tripod let me see something let me see if i can't set y'all up where it's not moving so much but meanwhile if you could give your just starting out self a word of advice or a sentence of advice what would you say what would you say to yourself is that going nope i don't like the way that works let's do, let's do this because i'm very curious to find out what others have encountered is that the right word i'm very curious to find out what you um in your times past or in things that you've been through in life and you really wish you could have told yourself different what would that be for me it would definitely be stop buying so many of them daggum embroidery designs that you're not going to end up stitching <laughs> that would be first and foremost y'all i have invested so much in designs that i have not used yet I bought them because I liked them or I thought I would make money off of them. But the, the, the fact of the matter is I was buying them pretty much for myself and didn't make any money off of them. I have so many designs, especially because they were on sale. And that's not, that wasn't good. Diana, take small steps, grow with your business and not ahead of it yes girlfriend yes any other quick tips that you would give your original self so um what would you warn yourself of i guess we could ask that as well would you warn yourself was going to say that just that about the designs miss barbara nance says yeah them designs is a fool there's some pretty ones out there though i'm trying to tell you I have thousands and thousands of embroidery designs. It's it's really sad. Uh, Will says, don't 
get discouraged. You will have plenty of downtime. Use that time to get things correct. Once it hits, it will. You will need to be ready. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Because a lot of times we want to be ready, but in reality, we actually are not ready and should be. So that's a good one. I like that. Uh, Brenda says, hello, Eve. Received my Epson printer. Now waiting on Caps on Fire to restock ink tomorrow. Have been buying blanks to practice on. That's what's up. I heard their ink is really good, so I'm excited to hopefully be able to try it one day soon. But I've bought extra ink, and I'm not even through my original ink yet. So I still have ink to go through. So Crafty says, my old self-statement is take the chance and just do it. I kept planning, but not taking the action. I, too, have way too many designs. Yeah, a lot of times we'll say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to bite the bullet. Okay, when I get this, this is when I'm going to do it. I'm going to start making money when I get my cricket. I'm going to start, but I got to have these designs. Or I mean, It's always something, and that's where you have to step back and say, you know what, just do it. Just go ahead and make something. What are you waiting on? Make a key fob, make a hand sanitizer holder, make a, a shirt with a monogram on it. See what happens, you know. And there's a lot of things out there that you can um, purchase to just try, try it out, see how it goes. We've done shows on that too. You can go to now. This is another form of investment in your business, okay? If you're wanting to try and make money, um, okay. Case in point, it's back to school time. Back to school time. So guess what that means? That means kids are headed off to college. So if you're wanting to make money, look at possibly doing some towels that you can send off with the kid that's going to college. Find some towels, maybe a Dollar Tree or something, or some fairly inexpensive ones at, uh, I think somebody said Kohl's had towels at a really good price and put a monogram on it maybe or do them in that particular school's colors and then put you know maybe something encouraging on it say graduate or um school days or something do something that would be encouraging to a school student and it individualizes their stuff because one of the biggest complaints on a college campus is towels rags clothes getting stolen so if it's customized they're more likely to go ahead and pay you for it because they want something that's not going to get stolen now yes you're also dealing with students going to college and that means money and they may be tight on money but i guarantee that the parents would probably prefer to pay for something that's going to not get stolen or um, lost as easily because it's easily identifiable and that's a way to make some money um, or what else you got um, you can put a little kit together with like shower shoes with some hand sanitizer holders hand sanitizer I mean it's all kinds of things you can do to dress up a little kit and throw in some embroidery here and there to make money uh, with the back to school crowd or with the younger folks do some hand sanitizer holders or make teacher appreciation gifts for welcome back to school for the new teachers um, that could be something that parents would like to send with their first day of school with their kids you never know um, hand sanitizer holders for their kids because who doesn't want to avoid germs right um, if the kids can take hand sanitizer themselves so there's a lot of different things out there. Pencil holders, book bags. I mean, the list is huge if you take the time to definitely see what you can invest in. Carolyn says, if you want to purchase more equipment to expand but don't have the budget or the customers, you can auto, you can subcontract it out. Sorry, this will help you see if the new equipment is something you really need I love that that's phenomenal because I've done that before as well so if you can reach out in your crafting circle see if there's someone out there who is doing embroidery maybe as well if embroidery is what you're doing and you want to cut your own vinyl pieces for instance 
see if you got a buddy nearby you that has a Cricut machine. Say, hey, can I come over and we, we cut some vinyl and maybe I'll do some embroidery for you, you know, or throw you a couple of dollars. Or um, if you have a larger machine, okay, sorry, this is a better example. The 200 hat order that I had, I do know of another person and another company where they have multi-head machines. I very easily could have subcontracted that job out, but because I priced it to what I was going to do the work, I couldn't do it because I under under uh, priced myself. So that's why it's really important to make sure that you price where you're supposed to. And especially if it's a job that you think you're going to end up subcontracting out so that you can still make a little bit of money, that you price it where you actually can do that. So that was a really good suggestion, Carolyn. Terry says to be more patient. Yes, patience is definitely a virtue in the embroidery world for sure. Leah says, learn to humor with all your sewing mistakes. Usually you won't be doing that again. I know, right? How many times have we uh, embroidered with the, like I did the other day, the wrong bobbin thread or um, use the wrong needle or damage something that the customer might have brought? There's a lot of things out there and you're going to make mistakes. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, just be cautious about what you're embroidering on. Take your time and don't take it so freaking seriously, please. Because I, like he wasn't supposed to tell y'all when I come home and something's jacked up and I'm like torn completely up and so upset. But that's because for me, I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to doing my work. I want to make sure that it's just so. It has to be something that I would purchase. If I wouldn't purchase it, then I'm not going to sell it to my customer. So if I've screwed up, nine times out of ten, me, I'm going to eat it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, you know, frustrates me. So definitely keep that in mind that you're going to have mistakes. Try not to be so hard on yourself about it. And it'll all work out in the end for sure. Jalil says it's a marathon and not a sprint. Take your time to grow your business. Run your race. Don't try to be a copy of another person's business. Yas, honey, yas. Because each person's business is different. Each person's business is different. We all have, even if you're an embroidery business, I'm an embroidery business, you have a six needle machine and three embroidery machines, I have a six needle machine and three embroidery machines. You got a cricket, I got a cricket. That doesn't mean that we can't be different. That doesn't mean that we're gonna do everything exactly the same. Even if we were doing everything, making everything exactly the same, my personality mm -hmm. out of 10, is going to be completely different from yours. So my customers would be attracted to me because of my personality and what I'm willing to do and not willing to do, whereas yours may be different. So run your, your race, your race. This is your business, not mine. I'm giving some information about how I did things. I'm getting information um, through my husband with how he did things. My business advocate in here, Jalil, she's giving information on how she's done things and, and her experience and her expertise. Others, you're all voicing each of your own versions of your own expertise of what you've gone through. That doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong or what you're doing is wrong. That just means we can learn from each other, okay? And you can take it, and if you don't agree with some part, that's cool too, because this is your business at the end of the day. This is going to pay your bills. This is your money that you're investing in, your equipment in the discussion so you have to do what works for you and keep in mind that sometimes we have to pull from other places here and there to make it work all right and sometimes that means swallowing bitter pills that may not taste so good going down you know like many of the times he's told me no in wanting to invest in something else um and i couldn't be mad I mean, I could be mad, but it was pointless because in, at the end of the day, <clears throat> I knew 
<clears throat> that he was looking out for my be our best interests rather as a family and it always ended up working out beneficial because I listened you know and and took heed to what he had to say Stacy says research extensively on your craft and again that goes back to as I mentioned when you're you can find a lot of these used machines because folks just rush out and buy something because everybody else is buying it too. And then when they get it home and they can't get that sucker to work like they thought it was going to work, and what does it do? It sits there and collects dust or it ends up at the Goodwill or on Craigslist. So um, do your research. It's really important. Like I really wish I had a research that printer and knew that my ink cartridges were going to be $4,000 quadrillion dollars every time i needed one um then i probably would have made a different decision but as it stands i've made that investment has been made and it's okay but you best believe before i got that 7710 and started doing the sublimation i researched for a good while y'all don't know how long i sat on that i sat on that that idea and that thought process and trying to figure out if that was the decision I was going to make. I sat on that for a while because I wanted to make sure, 100% sure, that that money, especially because a lot of the money that was used to purchase that came from you guys supporting my Amazon store. So because y'all supported the Amazon store, there was a good chunk of it sitting there from Amazon funds that help me get that and i don't want to waste your money and your time and what all you know you were willing to do for me so because of that i wanted to make sure that investment was sound and i wanted to make sure that it was something that i could easily turn around and say hey this is something else you can look into if you have the means to do so this is how much it turns around only to benefit you guys and you may think i'm kidding but it's the truth i do a lot of stuff around here because i feel like it's beneficial to y'all like for instance this grip hoop here that i've mentioned and that i did the rain boots on and that i was embroidering the chipboard on you know this thing here it's a chunk okay you're talking about um we're talking about 600 plus dollars to invest in this thing that I can't get off the machine right now because I didn't plan this ahead of time but this thing was it's pricey I'm not gonna lie to y'all okay so initially I didn't really realize how pricey it was but this thing is an excellent investment it is an excellent 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 <laughs> excellent investment okay so if you have a multi-needle machine this thing will help you hoop and embroider on stuff that is going to make money so the rain boots you know how many folks are actually out here embroidering rain boots how many it's not very many folks because of how much this costs they're already spending thousands on the machine they may not have the extra six to to invest in this but you can be ahead of that curve by going on and making this type of investment so that you can do rain boots tennis shoes um hats structured caps the backs of caps um chipboard right boxing gloves some of the other things that we're going to be doing videos and embroidering on so again this was an investment this is an investment i was this is an investment and it's a big one but it's beneficial so coleman and company um or coldesi incorporated coldesi was nice enough to let us give this thing a shot and uh let me do the video so that i can show y'all just how freaking cool this grip really is it's a lot of fun and i've been having a a ball with it probably embroidering stuff probably shouldn't be embroidering but i have been so you know it's an investment you have to make the choices of what's going to work for investment with your company and doing research 
on the things that are available, research on how to safely and correctly use some of this equipment or use all of the equipment is very, very important. I can't begin to tell you how many questions I have from folks that bought the machine, but you can tell they just really didn't do any research first. And so they're asking questions that really should be known, but it's not. And that that's okay, but it it's better if you do the research because you'll retain it better. If you go ahead, research it for yourself, and be like, oh, that's how you do that. You know, and then it'll stick with you a lot better instead of somebody always just giving you the answers, okay? So it's okay to ask questions. I don't have an issue with that. Definitely do research. Um, Miss Social Dale, hey, girl. she says, I'm right there with you on buying those designs. Yeah, y'all, y'all, definitely. So Crafty says, also was scared to fail. Yes, failure is not an option. Uh, we learn around here. We don't fail. We learn, okay? So you, well, that, well let me put it this way. That's my grandpa. That comes from my papa. He said, you learn from life. Life is always going to happen. You, Your life is going to be what you make of it, right? So no matter what decision it is that you make in life, if you don't look at it as a bad decision, if you don't look at it as something bad that's happening, just look at it as something you're learning from. You're learning. You're learning not to do something again. You're learning not to embroider without that type of stabilizer. You should be using that stabilizer. You learn from it and it's easier to stomach when you look at it that way. So generally, I'm like, oh my God, that's just like trying to get the worst thing. No, but and, and when you start thinking like that, like, oh my God, this is just the worst thing ever. Oh, it just doesn't make if you think of think of think of how I'm just now saying that that automatically puts you in a negative place. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to make sure we have positive. That's why the, the slogan is happy embroidering, because we want you to have happy embroidering. So try not to go to that negative place, uh, because you're going to learn from everything that happens to you in your life, whether you want to learn from it or not. You're going to learn. So you might as well just say, you know what, let me learn from this. What, what, if, what am I supposed to learn from this? What am I supposed to learn good or bad or whatever learn from it instead of just going completely negative with it all right that i think will help out thank you will for the donation the super chat i definitely appreciate all support to this channel for sure more so than any more so than anybody ever knows Sheila Cushenberry says, our students have to wear their IDs at school so could do lanyards with ID holders. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. See, look look at those things that are required. Those things that are requirements around you. And you can use that to your advantage. You can use it to your advantage. So if you don't have kids in school, that's okay. Do you have neighbors who have kids in school? Are you cool with the mom next door? See if you can slide in with her with the kids. Hey, who do you who's your teacher? Do you think your teacher would let the kids have A, B, C, X, Y, Z? You know, and that could be a way. Or check your local dentist. You go to the dentist, get your teeth done, check there. You go to the eye doctor, check there. You go to your regular doctor, check there. You never know. They could have um scrub tops that they want their names on. Or maybe their monogram somewhere so that their scrub tops don't get missing. Or they have the stethoscope thing. Try and find something that could go on the stethoscope. Or maybe they weigh lanyards. So it's it's all kind of places out there. You just got to look. Leah says, I tried Etsy. I found I was paying Etsy fees monthly. Yes, girl. Yes. I was paying Etsy fees monthly way more each month posting items than I was actually selling. Had near two years sold one thing at the time. I'm right there with you. Now, I sold a few more than one thing, but my thing was I was spending so much with the fees and advertising and trying to put my my bibs and stuff ahead so that folks could see them, put them out there on the front. I got a lot of likes, a lot of hearts. A lot of people coming to look 
and see what it looks like out of a hundred people maybe 15 purchased so the the balance just wasn't there there has to be it has to balance itself out the investment has to balance itself out it really does what did i do i have not closed my etsy store but i did take everything out of it because etsy was just like still snatching their fees every month whether i sold anything or not and i i understand i'm not saying that's a bad thing because they're giving you an opportunity to have an online store so that costs you know they they have to make money too and that's okay but at the end of the day what works for you and what works for your business if you're not selling on that platform I don't know. I mean, you know, you either find something else to sell or find another platform. Okay. So a lot of times, actually, and for those of you who have an online presence, let me know which works better for you, face-to-face -face and word of mouth or online. Which one has treated you the best, face-to-face -face or word of mouth, which is in person or online? Let me know. Let's take a quick poll and let me know which one worked better for you. Um, Kim Smith, I was thinking of opening an Etsy store, but I am so busy. I don't have the time. I have a full-time job and to do this crafting on the side, and sometimes the crafting is overwhelming. But again, the good thing is for now, yours is because your job is your primary income. Your investment is at this point because you want to. Okay, so don't let it be overwhelming unless you're getting orders and the orders are being overwhelming. But you have to be realistic with yourself and say, you know what, self, I, I just, this is a long work week. So I really need to back it down some and let folks know I do have a full-time job. This is not my full-time job. So please be patient with me to get this order out. Okay, and you may have to enlist help. But for the most, or outsource, as was pointed out earlier, you may have to outsource and for the time being um, to make sure that it gets done. But if you don't have to, if it's not a necessity, if you're not making money off of it, or if you're not charging because you're doing this as a favor or whatever because you do have a full-time job, don't let that overwhelm you, baby girl. Don't let it. I know that's easier said than done. Trust me. Because I do it all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do that for you. And then two months later, I'm still sitting. Like I told a really good friend of mine, she wanted a baby blanket done for her grandbaby that was going to be born, knew the baby's name, told me what she wanted. She was like, be creative, do whatever you want to do. Great, I'll make the blanket. It's been, how old is that baby now? Hey, that baby is three months, four months. I can't remember. Blanket still sitting right out there on the it's still sitting out there on the table and she came by the other day because she wanted me to do something else for her and i did that right away because i wasn't making anything i was just putting a name on something and i was like girl i am so sorry she was like i know you're busy don't worry about it. see it's, it's folks like that you got to have in your circle especially when you know you got issues but the thing is you have to set your own expectations to keep yourself from getting so flustered and overwhelmed y'all i'm trying to tell y'all it's not fun it's not fun to be doing too much kim smith says have to get more on top of my turnaround time y'all i do too but at least my folks know i tell them and when they pay that invoice it says two to four weeks i don't play that two to four weeks not because it's going to take me that long but because i never know i never know i never know I'm an only child, so if anything goes down with my parents, it's on me. I have six kids, so if anything happens with any of my kids, it's on me. My Some of my kids have spouses. You best believe if anything happens to them spouses, I'm going to try and be there for them. I have in-laws that I love with everything within my being. If anything happens with them, I'm going to be there. I have my own personal health. So there's just there's so many variables that I have established in my mind and I've made it clear to my customers that comes first just like it would come first for you your kids would come first for you 
your mom should come first for you. So let them know stuff happens. I'm going to try my best to stay on top of it, but please understand I have physical limitations. I also have mental limitations because sometimes I get stressed out. It's like shuts down. So you have to be realistic. You really have to be realistic with your turnaround time. Okay. Diane Parker. Hello, my love. How are you? It's a welcome back. Not been a minute. Welcome back. <laughs> Leela says, since I was late joining, not sure if you said anything about the two sizes of the Epson printers. 2750 versus 7710. The conversion ink is the larger works it's needed, etc. 2750, uh, Leela, is an eight and a half by eleven. I think it actually goes to an eight and a half by fourteen when I looked it up. So eight and a half by fourteen inch size printer. So just your regular size sheet of paper, which of course right now I don't have a yeah. The, so no, that is not paper. Yeah. How is my life going right now? So regular sheet of paper. Okay. I think that's what this is. So this is the biggest size that you'll be able to embroider is your regular size paper. Okay. Um, on the uh, 13 by 19. Um, the Not 13 by 19. Sorry. 7710 and the 7720. You can do up to, oh crap. Okay, so this is 11 by 17. And that is in comparison to eight and a half by 11. This is 11 by 17. All right, and then the 13 by 19, I believe is right here. Let me see, watch me. If y'all hear crash, boom, bang, bam, don't pay no attention. Oh. This is 13 by 19, and this is 11 by 17. Can you see that with my fat arms? So this is the biggest size that you'll be able to print with that 7710 or the 7720 versus the 27, what did you say, 2750, okay? If that's the one Justin mentioned, I'm, I'm hoping I'm remembering that's his model number correctly. Which is fine. If all you're going to be sublimating are, say, just regular shirts, not all over, if you're going to be doing mugs, if you're going to be doing keychains or luggage tags or simple stuff like that, the smaller sublimation printer is perfectly fine. Also, the smaller sublimation printer can be your segue. It could be what you're starting out with, and then eventually you'll move to the larger one. Okay, because it's less way less expensive all right so if you are limited in your budget and you want to just get started do the smaller sublimation printer and just sublimate the smaller stuff i mean eight and a half by 11 still is big really so don't you know get intimidated by that size factor it's a great printer to start out with because he does have it and he has it set up to sublimate with so definitely do that Sheila Kushner says, my problem is that still being fairly new, I haven't landed on my particular area, so I'm all over the place. <laughs> Key fog, baby stuff, stuffies, gets, ex gets expensive when you don't narrow your niche. I'm right here with your girlfriend, because guess what? When I'm all over the place, I'm over the, all over the place for y'all. <laughs> I'm always doing something and buying something and trying something so that I can show y'all, which is hilarious to me. But I get you. All right. So what my suggestion to you is take a step back. Find what you like the most. What is it that you just really have a lot of fun doing? Is it in the hoop? Is it embroidering bibs? Is it making onesies? Or is it doing stuffies, cat toys, dog toys maybe? Find one of the things that just really gets your juices flowing. And you're like, man, I could make these all day, okay? Then find where you can make that one thing fit into a niche or fit into an area that really appeals to you, okay? So for instance, the stuffies. If you really, really like making the stuffies, make some catnip toys. Can I not emphasize enough how huge the pet industry is? Huge, massive. The pet industry 
is the wave of the future. People care more about pets than they do people, okay? Which is understandable. Understandable. Ask Will. He'll tell you. The kitties are his everything. My dogs, I love my dogs to death. So there are, there are niches. You just have to find what really speaks to your soul. That's where you definitely want to move first. All right. Then once you get your footing in with that and you've made a little bit of money off of it, then, you know, add some other stuff and see how the other stuff fits in and uh, make that work for you. Miss Social Dad would love to start a small business. Finding time to do any of this is my biggest challenge. Not now, but maybe soon in the future. Meanwhile, I keep gaining knowledge and taking small orders. That's how you do it, babe. So if you're taking small orders, you started a business. <laughs> If you make one penny, somebody says, you know what? That embroidery is gorgeous. I'll buy it from you for a penny. For a penny. You got a business. You have a business. Your business is there. Just because it's a little bit here, a little bit there, doesn't make it any less of a business than anybody else. Okay? Your business is just as valuable. So the thing is, make sure that you run your business don't let your business run you so if you don't have time you you need to be realistic about finding the time and I, and if jaleel is in here i know she's probably telling me or saying to herself listen to my listen to this helper because she is saying stuff that she ain't doing herself yeah 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 i know you're right <laughs> you're right but guess what I can only preach it because I have been there. So find your time, carve out your 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 personal space, so to speak, if you can, because family is gonna break into that personal space no matter how hard you try. And use that time, energy, and resources to go ahead and keep using your business off on the side. Make that little bit of pocket change. And eventually, you'll be like, wow, I didn't realize I've been doing all of this. And now your business has become your mainstream. Rose May Daily. I love your name. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining. And Eddie Jr. What's good? What's good? <laughs> it's going good here. Diane Parker, how are you? Um... Davida says, I have enjoyed this chat. I do have a brother, SE400. However, I brought a singer legacy, SE legacy, with a bigger hoop, 6x10, with over 500 designs. I'm getting ready for retirement to have something to do. Yas, and that's okay. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to make your goals and stick to them. All right? You just don't get frustrated when it's starting off slow. Because as you mentioned, retirement, you've been running like a hamster in a wheel all this long time. Now it's time to coast right on into retirement. You know, take your time. Don't get overwhelmed. You know, do a little bit and then move forward as it grows. Grow with it. Let it grow with you. Miss Bickham, thank you for the super chat. I am sorry to be just now getting to that. Thank you. It shows up completely different on the phone. It doesn't show me an alert right away. So thank you. I really always appreciate your loving support for sure. <laughs> Kim Smith says, word of mouth works better for her. Terry Pont says, face to face, sell better at craft shows. Jennifer, face to face. Debbie Kidd, word of mouth. Never sell off my website. Right? Uh, Leah says sounding a bit choppy. I'm sorry. It's probably because the air conditioner is messing with my sound and I don't have my mic on. I wasn't at home. Um, uh, face to face and word of mouth, Debbie D. Thank you. Um, Miss Bickle says I had to pay my way in tonight. Y'all locked me out. Just kidding. I don't know what's wrong. Uh oh, well, I'm glad you're in here now. I apologize for the act up because I wasn't at home initially anyway so ain't no telling you know how it goes when you out of the norm girl it's a mess um let me see so you guys are proving my theory that the word of mouth versus online sucks it really sucks I'm trying to tell y'all the online hype it's not all it's cracked up to be online people still like that face-to-face -face interaction to get what they want to know that someone hears them about what they want and that somebody took the time to do something special for them it still means more so you can get that personalized 
touch a little bit on Etsy because that's what I was doing. They would buy a bib, inbox me what they want on it. I do it and send it and they'd be happy. So be it. So it can still be done. But face to face, it's just, it's more, it gives them a more secure feeling. It gives them a, a more secure feeling. The baby shower place. Hello, welcome. I just got my Epson 7710. I've been sublimating with regular copy paper. I've been preaching that. I've been saying you can. <laughs> You can sublimate with regular copy paper. You don't have to have sublimation. It looks better in many instances, especially with hard things like keychains and key fobs and luggage tags. It looks much better with sublimation paper. But shirts and stuff, kind of really can't tell the difference. Eddie Jr., I just realized it just now, but places like Goodwill are great places to see when to put embroidery on shirts and polos to see where or great for vinyl screen print placement on t-shirts that is true and also that's a good place to find um scrap so to speak clothes to use to test on so instead of going and buying a brand new shirt from walmart brand new polo shirt polo shirts ain't cheap polo shirts are high you know when they're not on sale so you can get a really nice polo shirt at the goodwill to put a left chest or name on uh the front of the shirt to try it out see how it works can you do it can it fit there you go you can get a lot of stuff at the goodwill to work on dr threads hey dr threads you didn't say i i'm glad to see you in here my love how are you dr threads says craft show face to face mouth to mouth and wear and carry what you embroider i know that's right that's a huge thing that candy promotes quite regularly is to wear your brand so that people will start to recognize you with your brand you know so i guarantee you that um if i were in a crafting area and i just so happen to have on something with mcquackens on it that would draw more attention and catch people's eye and they would know who I would be better and faster than if I was just to walk in just like a regular person. That branding is very, very important. And God knows if I was to walk around with that theme song playing. <laughs> oh man, that one uh, viewer who had me laughing to my her, her baby knew that song and would dance every time. That this tickles my fancy every time I think about it. Um... Oh, Lord, I forgot about the ripped jeans. Oh, y'all, jeans. Ooh, jeans are huge, especially with the new school year coming up and these kids. Jeans and possibly, I, I think, and you heard this from me. I don't know how it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm special when it comes to trends, and I ain't never figured this out, especially clothes and stuff like that. I think the jean jacket is gonna be hot here soon. I love, I always have loved the jean jacket, but with some really fly embroidery on it or something, man, y'all can make a killing. I'm trying to tell y'all. Um, Joyce Ricketts, hello, hello, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Bridget Gaines, hello, welcome. What do you sublimate using regular copy paper? Shirts mainly. You can do shirts. You can do um any fabric fabric type stuff is really good using regular copy paper you can sublimate key fobs keychains and stuff like that but i do have a post on instagram that shows the difference between regular paper on a key tag and um sublimation paper on a key tab doing the exact same design on the exact same substrate and it looks worlds different better Okay, so you can do copy paper if that's all you have, but it would be better to use sublimation paper with the hard stuff. Cheryl Ann, hello, hello, how are you? How are you? Lovely Mayhem, what stabilizer supplier would you recommend? I'm not going to lie, majority of my stabilizer comes from Amazon, World Widener. The majority of my stabilizer comes from there. The rest of the stabilizer, um, yeah. It comes from either Madeira, depending upon how I feel or what I need, or it comes from tex -Mac, which is the Happy um, Embroidery Company here in Charlotte. Happy Embroidery Machine. They have a store. The tex -Mac store has embroidery supplies. So I'll either get stabilizer from there or I'll get it from Madeira. But 
most instances I get my stabilizer from Amazon. Um, Janet McKinney, hey my love, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And if you asked me a question, you asked me a question and I needed to answer it. And I, right now, it's not coming to me. If I remember, I'm gonna answer my answer your question. Um. My friends who suffer, okay, so I answered the stabilizer, but I missed it. So sorry for taking so long to answer that. Cheryl Ann Peter says, I have, I had a brother SE 400 for 10 years, but my husband brought me the Senior Futura XL 420 last Tuesday. I ordered my laptop and it will arrive tomorrow. I cannot wait to get creative. Cheryl Ann Peters, congratulations on your new Senior Futura. on your new baby tell hubby he's super awesome congratulations <laughs> leela says thanks eve for the comparison of the, the two printers i think the smaller printer is all i need for now plan to do just t-shirts if that don't want to waste money and not do anything at all girl yas i'm trying to tell you but let me warn you now when you see just how easy it is to do sublimation you're gonna be hooked i'm just letting you know now you're gonna be hooked because sublimation is her thing and then some i love sublimation it's a lot of fun because it, it it's easy it's easy to do kim smith says eat my heat press came i hope you got credit for it ma'am if it came i'm sure i did congratulations <laughs> thank you on your heat press congratulations and if anyone is ever curious i'll let you know with amazon whenever you make a purchase on amazon it takes 60 days for the credit to show up in uh my account because it gives you 60 day window to return something if you have to return it i don't know who's returning if they return whatever whatever i never know so don't ever feel bad if you have to order something and return it um, do what you need to do to make sure that your purchase is a satisfactory one. Um, and I definitely always appreciate any support that you guys give, whether it be on Amazon, PayPal, here on uh, Super Chats with YouTube. Any and all support is amazing, and I definitely appreciate it. And we have some really cool stuff uh, coming down. I just It's some stuff I just really, really, two things I really wish i could tell y'all right now it's just amazing it's it's amazing the doors that have been opened and i'm just like beyond ecstatic about it so um just i'm super excited and looking forward to share that with you guys joyce rickett says what about mugs mugs are phenomenal sublimating mugs yes for sure but you have to have a mug well you don't have to have a mug press you don't have to have a mug press to sublimate mugs. There is a thing called a mug wrap, I think is what it's called. I can't think of the actual name of it. But there are wraps that you can buy and you could put the mug in the oven, which I wouldn't really suggest doing it with your home oven, but like maybe get a little toaster oven from Goodwill or something and you can sublimate mugs in the little oven. A lot of folks are doing it and it looks great. So, yes, you can do mugs, too. Lovely Mayhem, you're welcome. Kim Smith, thank you. Miss Social Deb, thank you very much. I have encouraged you to get serious with embroidery. You're welcome. Thank you for the super chat. I always appreciate it. <laughs> and we always want to keep you encouraged at all times. Mm -hmm. Eddie Jr. says... Oh, he's talking to Will. Bridget, oh, I forgot to mention that I bought a brother PE 800 about two weeks ago. I can't believe that I can embroider. Well, I can believe that we're going to ring the bell for you. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations on your new baby. <laughs> PE 800s are fun. That's five by seven. Goodness gracious deliciousness isn't it my love so yes you can embroider and you can embroider pretty generously so i'm glad you like it jenny mckinney says your granddaughter is there with you her name is mia hey mia 
I told her I needed to say hello to you before we watched her movie. Uh-oh, get to that baby's movie so she can see her movie. But hey, Mia, thank you for your patience and letting grandma say hi. I appreciate it. <laughs> Definitely appreciate it because them babies can be impatient sometimes. What's embroidery floss, lovely mayhem says? Embroidery floss is... If I'm understanding your question correctly, usually it's skeins of embroidery thread, but it's a little bit thicker thread, and usually it's for hand embroidery. We don't usually use embroidery floss in machine embroidery unless you're just hand tacking something. But usually it's those little skeins of floss that you can get at Walmart. Uh, I've seen them on the side where the cross stitch section is because technically cross stitch is a form of embroidery. It's just a hand embroidery. So yes, um, embroidery floss is generally used by hand, not by machine. Will brings out that Amazon Prime starts tomorrow. I'm gonna mention that in more detail here um, shortly. Carol Coleman says, I tried the other way to send my donation. I will check that in a moment because I am streaming by phone. I definitely can't see anything other than YouTube right now. But if you did, thank you, I am very grateful and really definitely appreciated very very much as always definitely okay so you guys will is always an awesome supporter to our channel miss carol coleman is an awesome supporter regular to our channel miss barbara nance miss janet mckinney miss bickham is a regular supporter i did say miss carol coleman i'm sure i did um we've had miss debbie d being a great supporter miss social deb again thank you so very much for your donation tonight um you guys are totally awesome in giving and supporting this channel because without y'all i mean that's why i'm here i'm have i have the channel because of y'all i'm not doing it because of me because i darn sure ain't nobody important <laughs> well somebody told me not to say that no more Ooh, i think that was miss carol coming don't get me <laughs> don't get me i'm bad about saying that in a way I, I i feel like it's okay let me shut up before i get blessed out the night after i end the live um skippy farnsworth says ding ding y'all congratulations to those leah says something funny eve i bought a stuffy from a dollar store i threw it under the heat press with sublimation regular copy paper and it turned out well it has a child's name on it guess what oh bridget says thank you for the bell i'm tickled you're welcome Y'all will not believe all the different things you can sublimate. It's a lot of stuff. And if you just play around with stuff, you'd be really, really surprised. I wish I had one of those um, uh, loveys in here, but it's polyester. You can sublimate on it. Felt, polyester, satin. Um, some few nylon is made out of polyester. Some nylon is not a lot. Um, uh, what is it called? Velvet, uh, fleece, polyester, um, uh, microfiber is polyester. So all of these different things you supplement on. Go figure. So that's why it's a the store stuff. I'm always to see what I can supplement on that nobody else has thought of. Just like I came up telling me it's reconnecting. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, my thing just acted up. And I don't know why. Um, can you use the regular photocopy paper with the mugs? But it will look much better with sublimation paper. That I do know. Um, well, congratulations on your PE 700, ma'am. Be nervous. Congratulations on your new machine. <laughs> that is awesome. Don't be nervous. You can do it. Just definitely take your time read the manual oh the 770 okay cool i was a little worried i'm like i ain't heard of the 700 you saw me hesitant i'm like wait a minute seven <laughs> no worries but congratulations the 770 is a workhorse girl you got a good investment right there thank you lovely mayhem for the donation and the super chat i appreciate that junior says <laughs> hey junior says eve always talks about i do some some small changes will be coming down the works, but for the most part, yes, I answer your questions. So Crampy says you're important to us. I appreciate that. Tonight has been so inspirational. You're welcome. That's the thing. I know if I've been 
in the age and wisdom on me that I cannot even think about trying to touch. They have been generous to share their knowledge and experience with me. So likewise, it's own right for me to turn around and share knowledge and experience with you guys. So I personally have been through. And investing in a business is huge. That's a huge ordeal for me. I needed to be sure with six kids, even though now my kids are grown, but with six kids that I still try to be there for, that I make sure that I invest wisely and I'm not wasting money because at the end of the day, if I waste money, I'm going to get fucked with that. I want <laughs> um, April, good evening, good evening. Welcome, thank you. Friday did, yes, I meant to text you about that. You say, I did 100 custom garment tags using satin ribbon. Yes, you did, and they looked fantabulous. I hope the customer was very appreciative because that was a lot of work, wasn't it? But you did a great Mia. You guys enjoy your movie, and I hope it's an awesome movie that Grandma's gonna watch with you. Your grandma's awesome. She's always encouraging to me, and she loves sending fan mail, and I definitely appreciate it. So crafty, thank you as well for the super chat donation. Dr. Thread says, How do we send money? If you would like to donate to the super chat here in the channel, there should be somewhere where you type in your question or your comments here on youtube there should be a dollar sign at the very end that's one way to do super chat super chats are awesome youtube gives me 30 no they keep 30 percent. i get the rest the 70 um in donation to the channel but it does come directly to me um you also are more than welcome to use paypal which is at the baby's booty on my phone um that is one way to donate as well so you can do the baby's booty at gmail which i will probably wait and check another video for the actual direct paypal link because the baby's booty some people have been spelling it wrong they say the baby's like b-a-b-i-e-s and that's we're a possessive company so it's the b-a-b-y-s b-o-o-t-y at gmail.com I wouldn't want the money to go to the wrong person. <laughs> that would suck a little bit for both of us. Uh, Diana Henderson says, what type of mugs can you sublimate on? Do they have to be a specific type? Yes, they do. They have to be sublimation mugs because sublimation mugs have a special coating on them that absorbs the uh, ink from the sublimation dye. So you do have to make sure that the mugs are sublimatable. If you want to purchase some to try them out usually you have to buy them in bulk okay so amazon sells uh, mugs that you supposedly can sublimate on i have yet to buy any from amazon that's why i haven't listed any in my amazon store and i want to make sure that if i buy the mugs that it's actually a really good mug to sublimate on um but there are companies that you can purchase from like Conde Systems which is dietrans.com d-y-e-t-r-a-n-s dot com you can get mugs from them I think you have to buy them in bulk but I'm not 100% sure um, and I think eBay even has some that you can purchase but as far as going in a store and buying a mug the only mugs that I have found in a store that you might could that you could sublimate on are these from uh family dollar they're in these super neon colors there's pink there's orange there's this green there's a blue right they're neon colors but there and there's a coating you can kind of feel it it's not like not like how this is you know like this but on the outside it's, it's just it's soft i don't know how to explain it but there's a obvious coating on here you can sublimate on this the only problem is after a while it kind of goes uh fuzzy it kind of gets fuzzy looking like the ink spreads i don't know what this coating is it can sublimate but it just it doesn't stay looking good okay so this is something you want to just play around with you can go to family dollar these mugs i want to say are a couple of dollars if that i don't even think it was quite that much um but ultimately to get the best hands down um experience with sublimating that's not going to end up you know being ruined later like these that will did for us these are actual sublimation mugs and nine times out of ten these came from dietrans.com d-y-e 
T-R-A-N is in Nancy, S is in Sam, dot com is one place. And then, like I said, Amazon has mugs too. Um, Buffering, yeah, that's what I was saying. Do I have a Cash App account? I do. I do have a Cash App. Um, and the Cash App is my name. It's uh, dollar sign and my name, E-V-E, -E, last name, L-O-W-R-Y. So, all of my customers, I don't know what it is about Cash App. Fuck out no more. I don't understand. Um, but it's dollar sign, E-V-E, L-O-W-R-Y. And I also have, uh, what's the other one? Zelle. I had somebody pay me by Zelle one time. I'm like, you, y'all folks is getting creative with paying for these orders. I'm not mad, but I'm like, I'm having to sign up for stuff every five minutes. <laughs> but yes, I do have PayPal. She's, he says, uh-oh, family dollar for some practice mugs. Yas. Oh, the mugs came from Dietrans. Cool. Will, can you put that link in the description for me? I mean, in the chat, please, for Dietrans. Um, because Condé Systems does have some really nice stuff. They really do. And I would link JDS Industries, which I get stuff from them. But the problem with JDS Industries is you have to have a reseller's license in order to purchase from them. So it's like I really don't want to give you guys that link and then it not be beneficial for everybody okay so thank you will i appreciate it on the sub mugs does it feel different as well no it does not it does not it feels like a regular mug you can't tell there's a coating on there there is a coating there but you can't tell on these mugs i don't know what the i mean it's a polyester type coating but you can't like see it i don't see any difference on this well kind of down here I see some pitting where it looks like it might have been coated with something but it's just a regular mug um I want to mention really quickly um because we're going on two hours and I don't want to be on too much uh l-o-w-r-y I have uh two e's in my first name and an o in my last e-v-e-l-o-w-r-y thank you for confirming Shamina if you overbake the mugs, you will. Okay. Thank you, Will, for letting me know that. Um, and if you purchase from Dietrans.com, they do have a recommended temperature and time so that you don't overbake it. So make sure to refer to that. Anytime you buy a sublimation blank, you need to refer to whomever you buy it from to learn how to sublimate on it, temperature and time. Uh, Prime Day starts tomorrow. Okay. So we were led to believe that we would know about deals ahead of time but you you only are made aware of certain deals ahead of time right so tomorrow morning <laughs> pray for me but whenever prime day kicks off i'm gonna be like this with the phone in one hand tablet and computer in the other all around this is what i'm gonna be doing um until i got a couple of appointments tomorrow um but for the most part and i have an assistant that's going to be helping me as well find these crafting prime day deals okay so we are going to be putting the prime day deals right there in front of you so that it's easy for you to find i'm going to make a category on the hoop group um where i will be listing those deals as they happen okay um now, I did consider to keep from overwhelming you guys with notifications from the Hoop Group because I really don't want to, you know what, let me let me rethink that. I may put a link in the group to a page on the website, okay, on thebabiesbooty.com where you can go directly to that page to look at Prime Day deals mm -hmm. because I don't want to overwhelm you with notifications. So what we'll do is put that link in there tomorrow morning. Okay, so that gives me tonight to get all of this together and make sure I get all the kinks worked out. And then tomorrow morning, you guys will be able to see um, the prime deals as they happen. Now, I want to warn you ahead of time, if you've never done Prime Day before, Prime Day, the deals go live and they're only live for a short time. They're only live for like a couple of hours or... Um, they're only live for however long it takes for them to sell out, okay? 
So please understand that if you're not on top of that list as that list is populated and deals are added, um, then you could miss out. Some deals that are going to be listed, uh, folks who have a Prime account um, get early access. So if you don't have a Prime account, you may not be able to purchase it because some, um, you know, if I post it early and you don't have a Prime account, then you can't get to it. So keep in mind, it's Prime Day. So if you don't have a Prime account, you can sign up for a 30-day limited trial on Amazon. Um, and you can get uh, Prime deals for 30 days for free. Also, I may throw in other things here and there. Like, for instance, I myself am looking at getting an Alexa here in the shop because I think it's going to be a lot of fun to have Alexa do some stuff for me because I play music in here a lot and have her call people and stuff like that for me. So I may post an Alexa or something like that. But definitely keep in mind that the Prime deals are there. They're mainly, primarily going to be crafting what we normally do related so i'm not going to be putting a bunch of crazy stuff out there trying to get you to buy crazy stuff i mean if embroidery thread goes live i'm gonna post embroidery thread if, if sublimation supplies go live i'm gonna post that too if potato chips go live i'm not posting that even though we use stacks in the studio i know i do but i'm not posting a bunch of crazy stuff i'm only gonna post the things that could be very beneficial to us in our studio so i'm looking forward to doing a prime day with you guys never done this before so i'm super excited um and also i want to um keep you guys informed by the end of the week we should have our classes listed for the cruise if you're not already in the listing for the cruise please customcraftcruise.com we will be having a crafting cruise in May of next year. Um, tickets are on sale right now. Right now, several folks have had to cash in and refund their cruise, and their cruise was fully refunded uh, because for whatever reason, they're not able to go, but that's okay. Uh, but our classes will be should be listed by the end of this week, okay, so that you can go ahead and start signing up. So let me know what you think about that once that goes live. If you have any questions, shoot them to me, um, and I'll see you about either directing you to the um, booking agent or answering the question for you. So otherwise, I've enjoyed talking to you guys tonight about investing in your businesses, some ideas about investing, what you would do to change and make things different. I always appreciate the support to our channel from all of our regulars and those who have supported the channel outside of the super chat tonight. I appreciate that definitely as well. And I always, always support, appreciate the support on Amazon because that Amazon money usually buys supplies for here in the shop or stuff for us to have fun with. I might even buy some mugs this time once that Amazon hits. So um, I appreciate you taking your time with us always. You've been super helpful as usual. We're going to find out about the leatherette and doing t-shirts and adding stones to remind me again how I go forward. I have the heat press. Um, adding stones, we have a couple of videos. So I'm going to send those to you and see if that's helpful. And if you have any other questions, you know you can always shoot them to me. That's, that's not an issue. And sometimes I forget when I get questions. I'm not going to lie because I got a lot going on. But if I do forget, just remind me. Ask me again and I'll definitely help you out. I will, Shamina. Thank you very, very much for your support. Especially with the lovely Cash App. <laughs> cash App is a trip, y'all. Oh, love Cash App. That thing be killing me. So at any rate. Thank you again. I appreciate you all. Thank you for asking the husband some questions and listening to what he had to say because he swears I don't listen, so I'm glad y'all did. And I look forward to seeing you all again next week. So again, or actually, I'm going to see several of y'all this week with Prime Day. But aside from Prime Day, I look forward to seeing you all either Friday in Will's Live or or next Sunday here at 8 p.m. So I look forward to seeing you all again. And until next time we see you, you guys have happy embroidering. I'm headed over to spend the rest of the evening going over this chat with the husband. <laughs>
talk to you later. I will, Miss Barmanez. Thank you. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Um, no, I'm not going live with Prime Day. That's too much. But I will be posting the deals live as they happen on my website. So, talk to you later. Bye.